we're living off, if you like, the, the forethought of, our, of previous generations who planted these big trees. And it's a dynamic process, nature, it never stands still. So we need to take up the baton and we need to be thinking about this and planting for future generations. Otherwise the city is going to become um, an impossible place to, to live comfortably in. If we imagine that by 2050, something like 75% of the world's population is going to be living in a city, then the livability of those cities is absolutely critical. It's really the geology of the city that's so fascinating, and every city has a different geology. The way that we view the city is, is, isn't a conceptual landscape, it, it is a landscape. The bricks and the mortar that that make the city are made out of the geology of the place. The substrates or subsoils are inherently connected with the character of our cities. So one can't really separate these things and certainly um, thinking of landscape as purely the bits in between is, is almost doesn't make sense to us. The Angel Building is really interesting because it had an unusual amount of open space attached to it. And the zone around it, which was landscaped, was um, quite nebulous, rather sterile, and certainly it didn't invite you in or make you feel like you could access it. It didn't feel like public realm. So when Derwent came to the site, they had big ambitions in terms of maximizing the development potential. But there were these trees that were, had been planted in 1980s, Four, I think, or something. So they're all of the same age, but sort of semi-mature, um, that were there, that we were very keen to um, retain. And I, I, I can honestly say probably Derwent wouldn't mind me saying that in the beginning they were less convinced by that because they knew that those trees were going to, in some respect, conceal certain parts of their development. So there were multiple complex issues there with retaining trees, not only close to the construction, but between which we had to create temporary construction road to build 70 million pounds worth of building. And then create this interface with the public pavement with a landscape rather than it being all paved. And um, the reason why it had to be a landscape was because those are all the root protection zones of the trees and the local authority wanted it to remain green rather than being paved. And the way that we approached it was that we would create quite formal structural planting, that it would be quite low so the sight lines would be retained over the top, and it would be quite strong in terms of being clear tapestry of blocks of plants which were orientated around the historic structure of what were terraced houses before, so we used the old historic plans to structure the landscape. So there was some kind of, sort of gentle reminder of the articulation of that part of Islington before this big block of development came. So in a way our role was very much to um, negotiate between the conservation officer and, and Derwent for a scheme that felt urban but which could retain the trees and, and have a you know, significant quantum of planting to, to hold the soils open. 